Sign in with Apple is considered one of the most user-friendly and secure authentication methods available. And today, we're going to take a look at how you can add this into your own applications. We'll cover everything from setting up your Apple developer account to configuring your Apple credentials to your backend, all the way to finalizing the login flow on the front end. And by the end of this video, your application is going to look something like this. We'll have a button to sign in with Apple, which takes you to this Apple login interface. Once you sign in, you'll be redirected back to your website where now you'll see it as an authenticated user with your name or email displayed. So I did want to mention real quick before we get started that some of the configuration that you'll see here is going to be a little bit different based on your specific requirements and the backend and tools you're using. However, a lot of these core concepts are going to be the same. So what I'd recommend you do is you follow along with exactly what I'm using in this tutorial. For example, I'm going to use AppRite as my backend and to manage my users. Just follow along through this create a free account on AppRite. And once you go through this process and finish this tutorial, you'll at least have a working project that you'll understand. And then from there, you can go into your own project and see how things kind of vary. So I really just want you to get the core understanding just to make sure you know how this works. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get started in our Apple developer console because we can't do anything else until this step is complete. So go to developer.apple.com, make sure you're signed in and go to this accounts tab right here and just go ahead and set up your account, check this box, and I'm gonna say no to receiving any emails here, and we're just gonna click submit here. Now, before we move any further, I did wanna mention that in order to use the sign in with Apple feature, you do need to join the Apple developer program, which costs $99. So in order to enroll here, you can just go ahead and click enroll today, and you can follow this step right here. It'll ask you for your payment, and once you make the payment, it does take about 24 to 48 hours for your account to be approved. So you can't just start working with it right away, unfortunately. For me, it took about 18 hours, but I've heard of stories where it takes a little bit longer. So you're going to want to wait for a confirmation email. And if you also just want to check your account, if you happen not to find that email or you lose it, uh, just go to your account. And once you're approved, your account should look something like this. Okay, so if you're still around, I'm assuming you decided to enroll in the Apple Developer Program. Maybe it's been a few days and you just got that confirmation email. So let's do a quick recap. So go to developer.apple.com to get into your account and go to this account tab right here. So if your account is approved, you should see something like this in your interface. And in here, we wanna do three things. We wanna create an app ID, a service ID, and we wanna create a key. So let's start by creating an app ID. So we'll go into certificates, IDs, and profiles. And under identifiers, this is where we want to create that app ID. And here you'll see all your app IDs. If you ever want to toggle this and go to all your service IDs, you can just switch this right here. So let's go into this plus icon. We'll go into app IDs. And we want to select the type of app. And we'll hit continue. So an app ID is required for every single app that uses an Apple service. So that's why we need to create this. And here we just want to create a description and a bundle ID and then give it some capabilities. So we'll just say this is for a tut for tutorial and then a bundle ID. This just has to be a string uh, reverse ID or reverse domain is recommended. So if you don't have a domain, I don't have one either. We'll just create something here like this. So we'll just do com dot tut Dennis dot and then we'll just say ai for app id so something like that make sure it's unique if this doesn't work i'll have to update this maybe someone already took this and then we'll have to scroll down to our service that we want to enable and we need to find sign in with apple so we'll check that we'll hit edit and we don't need to worry about the server to server notification endpoint right now we're not going to worry about this thing we'll hit save and then from here once that's enabled we just wanna go ahead and hit continue and we'll just register it. So we have our bundle ID and these credentials we'll need later. So don't worry about this at this point. We'll come back later and make sure we get everything once we're configuring to our backend. So we'll hit register and that registers my app ID. So the next thing I wanna do is go ahead and create a service ID. So we can go into the plus icon here. We'll select service ID and we'll just go ahead and hit continue. And here we'll also need to add in a description and an identifier for our service ID. So 
A service ID is something that we'll need anytime we're creating a web app that interacts with an Apple service like sign in with Apple. And this just helps identify the website that Apple is going to interact with. So for example, anytime we're sent to that login portal to add in our credentials to sign in with Apple, Apple needs to know what website are we sending this information back to. So that authentication token that it sends back, where does Apple redirect that information to? So we need to make sure that we have our domain configured, a redirect URL ready to go, and this is where we can do it. So let's just go ahead and create the description, and we'll just do sign in with Apple. We'll just make that short and then tut. And then for our identifier, we also want to use a reverse domain. So we'll just do com dot tut dennis and this has to be unique so let's just do si for service id for our apple id we did ai let's just hope that works and we'll hit continue so we'll register this real quick and we're not going to configure that domain until we have it but if i open up my service id this is where we can do it so if we go to sign in with apple we'll go to configure this is where we connect those domains and subdomains and return urls so this is very important we'll do this once we get there so let's just go ahead and go back. We'll go into our developer console here. We'll go back to account and under certificates, IDs and profiles, we're going to go to keys and this is where we need to create a private key. So a private key allows us to authenticate communication with some of our app services like sign in with Apple and we need to connect this to an app ID. So we're going to go ahead and create this. So let's just go into create key here. And we're going to call this sign in with Apple and we'll just say main because it's going to be the main key uh, description. We don't need to add that. So I'm just going to leave it there and we're going to select sign in with Apple here. So we need to configure this. So we'll click configure and we're going to select the app ID that we created. So this is the first app ID we initially created. We're going to make sure that this is connected here and let's hit save. Let's hit continue and we'll just go ahead and register it. Okay, so at this point, don't hit download. So we're gonna need this key ID later on, and we're also gonna need the key itself, which is gonna be downloaded as a file. So don't download it right now. If you do download it, you can just always recreate the key. Uh, let's just go ahead and hit done, and once we're ready to connect everything, that's when we're actually gonna get the keys. Okay, so now we're in the step where our projects may vary a little bit based on the back end we're using and the specific tools that you have. So what I'd recommend you do is use the same tools that I'm using. It's going to make this so much easier. And once you do this and you want to connect to your own project, if you're using something else, just change it later. But this way you at least walk through it one time. So it's free to do so. It's very easy. Just go to appright.io create a organization, create a project, and I'll even create a project from scratch just to make sure that it's easy for you to follow along. So once you create the organization, go to create a project, give it a name. I'm going to call it my app and we'll hit next. We'll hit create. And this is going to take a few seconds to generate. And once your project is ready, we'll go to the auth tab here. And here is where we manage all of our users. And we need to go into settings here to go ahead and enable an OAuth 2 provider. So we see Apple right here. We're going to go ahead and just hit enable right there. And this is where we need to take some of our credentials from our Apple developer account. We need to bring those in here. And then we also need to take this URI right here. This is going to be the callback URL that we're going to give to Apple so it knows where we're coming from. So let's go ahead and just check this out. So first we need a service ID. So I still have my Apple developer account opened. So we'll go into our account. We'll go into identifiers and let's just go into service IDs. And our service ID is going to be this reverse domain. So we're going to copy this and let's just bring this into service ID. Our key ID, this right here is going to be inside of our keys. And we'll go ahead and grab that right there. And we'll paste this in. So it's just a little bit of trading back and forth here. We're just trading information, making sure that there is communication between these two. And then we're going to go into our entire account. And we're going to scroll down into our project information or our account information. And we're going to take this team ID right here. So we need to copy that. I'll make sure that my personal information is blurred out. And let's go ahead and paste in our team ID. So that's under membership details under developer.apple.com forward slash account. Now, the last thing we need right here is going to be this P8 file. So what we're going to do here is we need to get the actual key that Apple generated for us. So we're going to go ahead and go into our keys. And this is where we're going to download that key and just bring this in here. So we're going to hit download. 
And I had some trouble getting this key because I'm on a MacBook and for some reason my settings are a little bit weird. So what you could do is just go ahead and drag this key into your desktop and you could just find it in your download somewhere as well. And if you have like a notepad or VS code that you can open it up with, go ahead and do that. One trick that I found is you can just go ahead and just drag it into your browser and it's gonna open it up like this and all you need is the actual key itself. So whatever way you find to open this, just go ahead and grab it, copy this, Close this out and inside of your configuration settings for OAuth 2 in your AppRite console, go ahead and add that in. And then we also want this URI right here and we wanna bring this into our Apple developer console. So once we're all set up here, let's go ahead and hit update. Make sure you have this redirect URI copy to clipboard and we need to bring this into our Apple developer account here. So inside of identifiers, we're gonna go into service IDs and we briefly touched on this earlier. So we wanna just go ahead and open this and in sign in with Apple, we wanna configure that right here. So we wanna connect this to the right Apple ID or app ID. Here, we can just go ahead and paste in that redirect URI. So this is where Apple is gonna send that authentication token once that authentication process is complete. So it's gonna send it here and then AppRite's gonna take care of the rest. Now we also wanna configure the domain itself. So let's go ahead and remove everything after the double forward slashes. We wanna get rid of that. And then we wanna remove everything after IO. So cloud.appright.io, that's the domain. This is where we redirect the user. So let's go ahead and hit next, save it. And that should complete the configuration process on the Apple side of things. Okay, so now that most of our configuration is complete, it's time to build out our actual website and build in that sign in with Apple button and complete that login flow. So for this, what I did is I created a GitHub repo. This is linked up in the video description. And in here, we have the final project code. So you can see what it looks like when it's done. And we have some starter code in there as well. So we're gonna clone this repo. We're gonna work within the starter code file here. And we're just gonna build on top of that. So this is meant just to speed things up. There's not much in there. We'll review all the code. Code. It's just some basic JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. And I'll just highlight what everything does and we'll add in our own functionality. So within this, I'm gonna open up my terminal and I'm gonna clone that repo. So we'll run git clone. And once that's cloned, I'm gonna open up this folder and this is called Apple sign-in. If this happens to change, just make sure you check out the actual repo name because this could potentially change in the future. So in here, I'm gonna go ahead and open up my terminal here and we're in Apple sign-in. We're just gonna CD into starter underscore code. And now we just wanna run NPM I. So I created this project with Vite. So there's some basic packages we might need and we just wanna run this right now. So we'll run NPM run dev and let's check out what we have. So we'll open this up on port 5173. And this is the project right here. So no functionality. We just have a home page with a button that says sign in with Apple. And then if we wanna review the code here under starter code, we'll go into index.html. And in here, we just have a div inside of our body. It has the ID of app, and then a button that says sign in with Apple. So styling, we don't need to worry about that. So we're just gonna go into main.js now. And in here, we just have a variable that points to our container. And then we have a variable for our button. We have a event listener that triggers the login SIWA, so login sign in with Apple, and we have an empty function. So should be pretty easy to understand. If you wanna build this out from scratch, you can do that as well. And we're gonna get started from here. So first thing is, is we have this .env file right here. And from AppRite, we need to connect to our backend. So we just need to get our endpoint and our project ID. And we're gonna create a .env folder inside of the starter code folder. So .env, we're gonna use this example and let's go ahead and get these credentials. So inside of our AppRite account here, we're gonna go into overview. Actually, we can just go into settings here and we can just go ahead and grab this project ID. We'll paste that in and then we're gonna get this API endpoint. So cloudapprite.io forward slash v1. So now that we have our AppRite credentials, we need to go ahead and configure the web SDK to actually connect to it. So let's go ahead and create a new file inside of our starter code folder here. And we'll call this AppRite.js here. And this is where we'll complete the configuration. So let's go back into our console and inside of the overview tab, 
let's go ahead and connect to the web SDK. So we're going to select web here. And here we have to take care of our course configuration. So we just want to give it a name and we're going to connect with our website and we're porting in from local host here. So if we don't add this, we're going to see a course error when we try to connect to it. So we want to make sure we set this up right here and let's go ahead and hit next here. And we want to make sure that we install app, right? So let's just copy this and we'll run npm install app right i'll turn off my server and we'll paste that in so npm install app right and from here we want to go ahead and import the client class here so we'll grab that and we'll bring this into app right.js here so import client from app right and let's go ahead and hit next here and we also want to initiate our client instance so let's just copy all of this and we'll bring this in right here and I'm going to change this up a little bit. So I'm going to create a new client and I'm going to do it this way where I'm just going to do dot set project and then we'll do dot set endpoint. Now the project and endpoint we already have inside of our ENV folder. So let's go ahead and bring this in. So we're going to do const and we'll do vt underscore endpoint. And then we also want to get vt underscore project underscore ID. And that's coming from import dot meta dot env so once we have that we can take this endpoint we can bring this into set endpoint and then the project id will bring that into our project id so once we've created the client instance we also need to create an account instance and this account instance allows us to do anything with our users so create session manage users and so on so we want to go ahead and create this and this is how we're going to create that oauth2 session so we're going to create a variable called new and this is gonna be account. And inside of account, we're just gonna go ahead and pass in client. And from here, we just wanna go ahead and export account because we wanna use this inside of our main.js file. So let's go back into our console and let's just finish this up here. So we'll just click next, go to dashboard. And once this is done inside of overview, if I scroll down here, I should see my platforms. And this is the platform that I just added. So let's go ahead and go back in here. And inside of main.js, now that everything's configured, we want to finish up this functionality. So in main.js, let's go ahead and import account. So account, and this is coming from forward slash app, right? And that's going to bring in the account instance. And now inside of our login function, let's go ahead and actually finish the sign in process. So we're going to call account dot create OAuth two session. And in this function, we only need three main parameters. So first is going to be the provider, and this is going to be Apple. Then we want the success URL. So when we log in, where is Apple going to redirect our user? So what I'm going to do here is just copy this URL. And we're going to bring this directly in right here as the success URL. So once we're logged in, we go back to this endpoint. And then if anything fails, we'll just send the user back to this home page. And then we'll just add in the pound symbol and say fail. So right now we haven't configured the actual endpoint for this, where we want to send our user, but we just need to give this function something. Now this right here technically completes our functionality. So right now we're just going to log in, but you won't be able to see that user change because we don't change our actual UI based on the user status, but let's just go ahead and actually start this process and make sure it's working. So let's go ahead and just make sure the server is running. So npm run dev, and let's just click this button. When we click it, it's going to trigger that function that we just built in. And here we go. It's starting this sign in process. So before we complete this, let's go ahead and actually grab some code from our sample. So we're going to go into final here inside of that GitHub repo. And I'm just going to paste in some code instead of writing this out. And we're just going to take this init function right here. And I'll just recap this real quick. So if you want to write this out, you can also just do that as well. So I'm going to bring this in under the login button here or function. And here we just have a try catch statement and we simply get our user using the account instance. And then if we have our user, we take our app div and we change the inner HTML to say hi, and then our username or email, and that's it. And if we don't have anything, we return that error and we want to initialize this anytime this page loads. So if we don't have a user, we should see that login button. Now, when we log in, once we're redirected back to this page, init is going to trigger and then take care of this. So let's try this out again. So right now we see sign in with Apple. I'm going to go ahead and open this up, continue with password. I'm going to use my Apple credentials here. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and continue here. 
and now we can see our logged in users. So we're officially logged in with Apple sign in. And if we go into our app, right console in the auth tab, we'll actually see this new user created. So this is the first time we logged in. The user is actually here now. And if I go into settings here, actually inside of the user themselves, I can go ahead and see the session. I can delete the session. We can log this user out. And now if I refresh it, we're back to our sign-in flow because the user has a deleted session and I can start this process again. So that's it for this login with Apple tutorial. If you have any questions, leave me feedback down in the comment section. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you all in the next video.